Hi everyone, this video is about Rolle's theorem and its applications. First, I'm going to state the theorem and I'm going to give some geometrical interpretation about the theorem. After that, I'm going to solve two related examples. Let's start by giving the statement of the theorem. The theorem says that suppose f of x is a function satisfying these three conditions. The first one is f is a continuous function over the closed interval a, b. The second condition is f is a differentiable function on the intervals interior a, b, the open interval a, b. And the last condition is that the function has equal images at the endpoints a and b. Provided these three conditions are satisfied, continuity on the closed interval, differentiability over the open interval, and equal images at the endpoints, then there exists at least one point C in the open interval a, b, such that the derivative of the first derivative of f at that point c is equal to zero. This is the result of the theorem. If these three conditions are satisfied, you have a zero derivative at at least one point c inside the domain, at the interior of the domain. The geometrical interpretation of this result, the, of the theorem, is illustrated in this part. Now, in this picture, I'm drawing a function f, which is satisfying these three conditions. Let's start by the uh, third one. The function f has equal images at the points a and b at the end points. And over that interval a, b, I'm going to draw a nice function. By nice, I mean it is continuous and differentiable. And this is a possible candidate for such a function. That's the graph of y equals f of x, satisfying those three conditions. Since these three conditions are satisfied, it is easy to see that there is a point in the open interval a, b, that point is c, at which the function has a zero first derivative. Of course, there is another possibility, or there are infinitely many possibilities for drawing, drawing such a function. One of the possible answers, what kind of a function f may satisfy these three conditions, the simplest answer might be, for example, drawing the straight line joining these two points. Of course, this is the function f, which is equal to a constant, equal to f of a, over that interval. If I ask, what is the number c granted by the theorem to give you that result? You see that for this constant function, every point c over the open interval a, b is number satisfying this condition. At, at each point c here, here and here, you have a first order zero derivative or you have a horizontal tangent line. Again, let's go through that result. If the conditions are satisfied, the theorem says that there is at least one point c. Another possible graph might be, for example, drawing this blue one. In that nice picture, again, I'm stressing that by nice, I mean I'm drawing a continuous and differentiable function. There are three numbers, C1, C2, and C3, at which the first derivative are zero. Okay, don't forget that the theorem is guaranteeing just the existence of one of them, of course, there may be infinitely many numbers C satisfying that, that, satisfying that result. The conditions of the theorem are quite essential. If you uh, lack one of them, then you may not concluding anything from the Rolle's theorem, which means if you have a discontinuous function over the closed interval a, b, you don't have this result. Or if you lose differentiability on the interior, then you cannot state anything regarding that, or if you don't have equal images at the endpoints, you don't have anything to do with this result. Let's illustrate this. Now, again, let me repeat that. This is an example in which the function uh, f drawn in the figure is not satisfying one of the conditions of the Rolle's theorem. In this picture, the function has equal images at the endpoints, so the third condition is satisfied. It looks like a quite continuous function, so, so the first condition is also satisfied. But you see that the function 
fails f not differentiable here. The function fails to be differentiable at that point uh, c, let's say. C, therefore, the function is not satisfying one of the conditions of the Rolle's theorem, which means Rolle's theorem does not apply here. So by using Rolle's theorem, you cannot conclude anything. If Rolle's theorem is not applying, we may or we may not have a horizontal tangent line. For example, in this example, the differentiability condition is not satisfied and you don't have a horizontal tangent line. You don't have a zero derivative point. It says if Rolle's theorem does not apply, we may or we may not have a horizontal tangent line. In the first one, we don't have any. In the second one, it is also having equal images at the endpoints. It is a nice continuous function. It is again losing differentiability at that point C here, which means the differentiability condition of Rolle's theorem is not satisfied. And we don't say anything by Rolle's theorem. We cannot say we do have a horizontal tangent line or we, may, uh, we don't have a horizontal tangent line. Although the conditions are not satisfied, we have two horizontal tangent, line, tangent lines here. Therefore, don't forget that if any function is failing to be satisfying these three conditions, we are not going to conclude anything using Rolle's theorem. Now, let's pass to the example. The question is saying that, can we apply Rolle's theorem to this function over the closed interval 0, 1? And if so, find the admissible value of C stated in Rolle's theorem. The solution is as the following. I have this function. First of all, in order that this function is defined, x times 1 minus x. I'm analyzing the sign of this function quite simply in this, this table and observing that it is non-negative over the interval, over the closed interval 0, 1. After that, let us write this function as the composition of these two functions. The function root x composed with x times 1 minus x. And it is quite easy to see that x times 1 minus x is continuous since it is a polynomial and non-negative due to this table over the interval 0, 1. The second statement, the function on the left, root x, is defined and continuous if its argument is non-negative. So it is, it is continuous and non-negative over that interval. By these two statements, f is going to be that composition function, f is going to be a continuous function over the closed interval 0, 1. Therefore, the first condition of the Rolle's theorem is satisfied Again, let me say that f is a continuous function over the closed interval 0, 1. Pass to the differentiability condition. The second condition is that f is going to be a differentiable function over the open interval 0, 1. f, differentiated this way, is obtained easily in this form. I see that f prime at x is existing for every x belonging to this interval. The only points which is violating the differentiability of this function are the points x equals 0 and x equals 1, but they are not included in this interval. Therefore, I can safely say that f is a differentiable function over the interval 0, 1, which means the differentiability condition over the open interval is satisfied also. Now, the last condition, the function is having a zero image at the left end and it has a zero image at the right hand. The images of the endpoints are equal to each other. The last condition is also satisfied. Therefore, I'm safely saying f is satisfying the hyper, all the hypotheses of Rolle's theorem over the interval, the closed interval 0, 1. Therefore, Rolle's theorem can be applied to this function. Therefore, by the result of the theorem, there is at least one point C on the open interval 0, 1, such that the first derivative of f is zero at that point C. And the question is asking us, find the admissible value of that C stated in the theorem. How do I find that? I have the formulation of the first derivative of the function. I'm simply replacing x by C here. One minus twice C, C for this x and this, that x also. The first derivative at C equal to zero. Easily by making equal the numerator to zero, I get that, fun that number C stated in the theorem is equal to one half 
belonging to the open interval 0, 1 as granted by Rolle's theorem. And this completes the solution. Now, the second example, the question is, suppose f and g are differentiable functions, which means they are differentiable everywhere, and that for a less than b, f of a is equal to g of a. They have, the functions f and g have equal images at a, and also at b they have equal images. If these conditions are satisfied, show that at some point c in the open interval a, b, the tangent lines you are going to draw to the graphs of f and g are parallel to each other. This is the one, this is the thing we are going to show. First of all, let us try to extract some information from the statement of the question. It says f and g are differentiable functions, which means if f and g are differentiable functions, they are also continuous functions. This is our first result. I'm putting this in my pocket. After that, let's pass to here. I'm now considering the closed interval a, b. Don't forget that f and g had equal images at the point a and b. I'm defining the function h, which is the difference of these functions f and g, f minus g, and I'm going to consider this interval. I'm going to check whether I can apply Rolle's theorem to this newly defined function h over the closed interval a, b, which means over that interval, whether h is continuous, differentiable, and have equal images at the endpoints. First of all, since f and g are continuous, their difference is also continuous, therefore h is continuous on the closed interval a, b. The first condition is satisfied. Since f and g are differentiable functions, so is their difference f minus g. So the function h is differentiable on the open interval a, b. And this derivative is, of course, the difference of the derivatives of f and g, f prime minus g prime. The second condition is satisfied. F is con h is continuous on the closed interval a, b. It is differentiable on the open interval a, b. I'm checking the endpoint condition, that nearly defined function h evaluated at a is equal to f of a minus g of a. f of a, a minus g of a. Remember that they had equal images at the endpoints, at the endpoint a, therefore h of a is zero. And h of b, h evaluated at b is equal to f of b minus g of b. They were also equal to each other, making h of b equal to zero. I'm interested in whether h of a is equal to h of b or not, so it is. Therefore, the three conditions are satisfied. Again, the newly defined function h, f minus g, is continuous over the closed interval, differentiable over the open interval, and it has equal images at the endpoints. Let me again rem uh, remind you that the continuity of h is coming from the fact that f and g are also continuous. The continuity of f and g are coming from the fact that f and g are given to us as differentiable functions. As the result of Rolle's theorem, there exists a point c in the open interval a, b, such that h prime at c is zero. h prime at c means you are evaluating this equality at the point x equals c, therefore, f prime at c minus g prime at c is zero, f prime at c minus g prime at c is zero, and at the end you arrive at this equality which tells you that. At some point c in the open interval a, b, the first derivative of f and the first derivative of g, they are equal to each other, they coincide, which means in geometrical terms, the tangent line you are going to draw to the graph of f at the point c, is going to be parallel to the tangent line to the graph of G you are going to draw at C. This is the thing asked to you by the question, show that it was asking us to show that at some point C in A, B, the tangent lines are parallel to each other, and this tells me that so they are. The key point in answering this question by using Rolle's theorem is the definition, defining of this function. The question, how do I define that? If I define that, 
correctly, f minus g, everything is going on quite accurately, but uh, I have to give a geometrical motivation for defining that function. Remember that the question was answering this, provided you have two differentiable functions, f and g, which have equal images at the point a and at another point b. And remember that they were also differentiable, let's say, nice functions. So let's suppose that that's the graph of f. Suppose this is the graph of g, say. And the question is asking us to show that at least at one point c, inside a and b, they have parallel tangent lines. If I'm going to show this, if they are parallel to each other, that means I'm going to show in mathematical terms that f prime at c is equal to g prime at c. This is going to be the thing I'm going to prove. Equivalently, I need to prove that f prime at c minus g prime at c is equal to zero. Or in another notation, let's say f minus g differentiated at c is equal to zero. Well, if I'm going to show that, and if I'm going to use Rolle's theorem, remember that the result of the Rolle's theorem says that provided the conditions are satisfied, you have a function in your hand. The result is that that function's derivative at some point c is zero. If I'm going to arrive at this, con this conclusion using Rolle's theorem, it is quite easy to see that I need to define my function as the difference of the two functions f minus g. That's the motivation for defining h of x as the difference f minus g at the very beginning of the question. And let's end the solution by this geometrical motivation. That's the end of the solution.